Hi, today we're going to be learning about multiplying algebraic expressions using the laws of exponents. So first let's run through a couple of the laws of exponents that we have already learned that we're going to be using in this lesson today. The first one is multiplying powers with the same base. So remember the law looks like this. We have a to the power of m times a to the power of n. That gives us a to the power of m plus n. Remember when you have the same base, then you add the exponents when you're multiplying powers of the same base. The next one that we're going to be using in this lesson is raising a power to a power so that the law looks like this. We've got a to the power of m in brackets to the power of n and that when we simplify it, the base stays the same and we multiply the exponents m times n, okay? And then the last one that we're going to be working with today in this lesson is raising a product to a power. So that looks like this, a times b in brackets to the power of m. So then when you simplify that, you get a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So you'd simplify each of the things inside the brackets by raising it to the power outside. Okay, so these are the laws that we're going to be using while we're working in this lesson today. Let's have a look at the first example we're going to be doing, which is this one over here. We've got negative 4b squared c cubed times 3ab to the power of 4 times negative 2a to the power of 4c to the power of 5. Okay, so first, when you're going to simplify something like this, the first thing you need to do is you need to determine what your sign is going to be. Okay, so my sign, remember we look and see how many negatives there are. If there are no negatives, you don't have to worry about it. But if there are negatives that you're multiplying, then you have to look at how many there are to see what the sign is going to be of your final simplified answer. So I've got two negatives. An even number of negatives means that this is going to stay, it's going to become positive. If there were an odd number of negatives, it would be negative. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to multiply our numerical factors. So those are the number parts, the coefficients in each of these. So 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So it's positive 24. And then we're going to do our variables. And we do the variables in alphabetical order. So first I'm going to look at my a's. There aren't any over here, but I go onto this a and those a's over there. So I've got a times a to the power of 4. That is a to the power of 1 plus 4 is 5. Remember, you can't see the 1 over here, but if there's no visible exponent, it means that the exponent is 1. So we're going to add the 1 with a 4 and we get 5. Then I go on to my b's. I've got b squared times b to the power of 4. The b stays the same, and I'm going to uh, add my exponents. There's no b over there, so it's just these. So b squared times b to the power of 4. 2 plus 4 is 6, so it's b to the power of 6. And then c cubed times c to the power of 5. There's no c's over there. So the c stays the same. And then 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. You've got 24, a to the power of 5, b to the power of 6, c to the power of 8. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to complete these questions.
Okay, so let's go through each of those examples. So the first one we've got is negative 7x to the power of 4 times 2x to the power of 7 times x. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine what our sign is going to be. So I've got over here negative times positive times positive. That's an odd number of negatives, so my answer is going to be negative. Then 7 times 2, I do my numbers next. So 7 times 2 is 14. And then I multiply anything that has the same base out of the variables. And in this case, I only have x's, so I'm just going to multiply those together. So I've got x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 7 times x, which we can't see the exponent, but remember there's an invisible little 1 over there. So I'm going to add those exponents, and the base stays the same. So it's still going to be x, and then 4 plus 7 plus 1 is 12. So it's negative 14 x to the power of 12. Then the next one, I've got a cubed times negative a to the power of 9 times negative a times a squared. So first, my signs, I've got two negatives, that makes it positive, and then they're all a's, so I'm just going to multiply them all together, and the base is going to stay the same. I'm going to add the exponent, so I've got 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 1 is 13, plus 2 is 15. So that is a to the power of 15. Question C, here I've got a negative, and a negative and a negative all being multiplied together so that's going to be negative that's an odd number so it's negative and then i do my numbers so that's nine times eight is 72 and then i'm going to do my variables in alphabetical order so first my a's i've got a squared times a cubed is a to the power of five and then my b's b cubed times b to the power of five is b to the power of eight so that's what you should have got for question c then question D, we've got negative b to the power of 6 times in brackets negative b squared times b. Now the fact that these are inside the brackets and that's outside and it doesn't matter because here it's just multiplication. If there was addition and subtraction, then we have to worry about things that are inside the brackets. But here it's just all multiplication, so I can just do it all at the same time. Okay, so first of all, I've got two negatives. That makes positive. There are no numbers to worry about, so I'm going to go straight on to my variables. There's only b's. So I'm going to have b to the power of, and then 6 plus 2 is 8, plus the invisible 1 is 9. So for question D, you should have got b to the power of 9. Then question E, we have got over here, 3 to the power, 3x to the power of 6, y to the power of 4, times negative 2x squared, y to the power of 7, z to the power of 4. So the first thing we're going to do is our signs. Over here I've got one negative, so it's going to be negative. 3 times 2 is 6. Then my variables in alphabetical order, I've got x's. So x to the power of 6 times x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 8. Then I've got my y's. y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 7 is y to the power of 11. And finally, there's no z here, but I have got a z here. So because there's nothing else to multiply it by, it just stays as it is, z to the power of 4. So that's what we should have got for question E. And then the last one, we had b to the power of 7, c cubed, times 7, a to the power of 9, b cubed, c, times negative 5, b to the power of 5, c cubed. Again, I've got only one negative here, so, negative here, so it's going to be negative. Then I do my numbers, so that's 7 times 5, that is 35. And then I'm going to do my variables in alphabetical order. The, the first variable I'm going to do is a, because it is the first one in, in the alphabet. So a to the power of 9, there's no a's there, no a's there, so it's just going to stay a to the power of 9. Then I go on to my b's. b to the power of 7 times b cubed is b to the power of 10, times b to the power of 5 is b to the power of 15. And then my c's, I've got c cubed, times c is c to the power of 4, times c cubed again is c to the power of 7. So for that question, for question f, you should have got negative 35, a to the power of 9, b to the power of 15, c to the power of 7. Okay, so now we're going to go on to some that um, we we're going to be using the next law that we have learned, which is raising a, a power to a power. So in this case over here, our example is negative 3, x squared y cubed z in brackets cubed okay so the first thing we're going to do is 
I need to identify my sign again. Just like I had to when I was doing just the normal multiplication, I need to identify my sign again. But remember, when we are working with a negative, it's inside brackets, and we have an exponent outside, we have to look at that exponent and, and determine is it odd or is it even. If it is an odd number, then the negative is going to stay negative. If it is an even number, then the negative is going to change to positive. So in this case, that exponent is odd, so it's going to stay negative. So it's equal to negative. And then I'm going to apply the law that I've learned that I'm going to raise all of the things inside here to the power outside. So it's 3 to the power. Inside, it's an invisible little 1 over here. So I multiply 1 by 3, and that gives me 3 to the power of 3. Then I've got x to the power of 2 times 3 is 6. Then I've got y to the power of 3 times 3 is 9. And finally, I've got z to the power, again, an invisible little 1 times 3 is 3. So that's going to give me, now I have to simplify my numerical factor or my coefficient. Okay, so I've got negative 3 cubed is 27. x to the power of 6, y to the power of 9, z to the power of 3. Now this over here, I want you to take note of what happened. This 3 and this 3 ended up completely different there and there. And the reason is because this 3 is an exponent, but this 3 is not an exponent. It has its own exponent of 1. Okay, so please be careful. When you are working with this law, you can't just multiply any numbers inside here by the exponent outside. You only multiply exponents by the exponent outside. So in this case, my exponent over there was 1. You couldn't see it, but it was 1. And so we multiply that by the 3, and that gives me 3 cubed, which gives me 27. So when you are doing questions like this, you do end up, you do need to simplify your numerical factor or your, your coefficient so that it's not in exponential form anymore, because you'll be doing ones that are reasonable to do that, um, which you can't do with your variables. You can't simplify these, you don't, because you don't know what the values of the x, the y, and the z are. So you can't simplify those, but you can simplify this, so you do need to. Okay, so just be aware of that, that if you've got a big number like this, a coefficient, you have to raise it to the power that's outside. You don't multiply it by the exponent outside. Okay, so that is how you do that question. So I'm going to give you now a few that you're going to work on for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to complete these examples. Okay, so let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had in brackets 2x two to, two to the power of 8, and then outside the brackets is the power of 5. 
And the first thing we need to do, in this case, there's no negative to worry about. So I can go straight on to my calculation. So I need to first raise 2 to the power of 5. And then x to the power of h to the power of 5. I multiply the 8 and the 5, and that gives me 40. Then I need to simplify the 2 to the power of 5, and that gives me 32 x to the power of 40. So for question A, you should have got 32 x to the power of 40. Remember, it's not 2 times 5, it's 2 to the power of 5. Question B, we've got, again, no ne negative, so I can go straight on to the raising of the power to a power. So I've got 7 to the power of 1 squared is 7 squared. And then a to the power of 5 squared is a to the power of 10. And then b to the power of 6 squared is b to the power of 12. I multiply those. And then I'm going to simplify my 7 squared, and that gives me 49. So it's 49, a to the power of 10, b to the power of 12. Question C. Now this one I do have a negative, so I first need to determine is my answer going to be positive or negative. My exponent is odd, which means that this is going to stay negative. So it's going to be negative, and then 4 cubed, x to the power of 9 times 3 is 27, y to the power of 2 times 3 is 6, and z to the power of 8 times 3 is 24. Now I need to simplify, I can't leave it like that, I need to change that 4 cubed, and that becomes 64. So it's negative 64, x to the power of 27, y to the power of 6, z to the power of 24. Okay, and then the last one, question D, again there's a negative. In this case my exponent is even, which means that that's going to change to positive. So it's going to be positive, 9 to the power of 1 times 2 is 2, e to the power of two, 6 times 2 is 12, f to the power of 3 times 2 is 6, and g to the power of 1 times 2 again is 2. And that I need to simplify. The 9 squared gives me 81. e to the power of 12, f to the power of 6, and g to the power of 2. So that's what you should have got for all of those questions. Right, then the last example we're going to go on to is a little bit more complicated. We're going to be combining the things we've done so far in this lesson. So in this example, I have got... Um, in brackets, 2x squared y, and that outside the brackets is cubed. And then in new brackets, I've got 3xy cubed outside the brackets is squared. Okay, so first, I'm going to simplify 2x squared y cubed by raising everything inside there to the power of 3. And then I'll simplify 3xy cubed squared, I mean, but 3xy cubed by raising that all to the power of 2. Okay, so over here, I've got first, no, ex no negative, so I don't have to worry about any, my, any signs in this example. I'm first going to simplify this over here. I'm going to keep it in brackets because I'm still going to be multiplying it by what I have over there. So I've got 2 cubed, x squared cubed is x to the power of 2 times 3 is 6, and then y cubed. Then over here, I've got 3 squared, x squared, and y to the power of 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so now that I've done that, the next step, just like what we were doing in the previous examples, is we need to simplify these over here. So I've got 2 cubed is 8. 8, x to the power of 6, y cubed, and then 3 squared is 9. 9, x squared, y to the power of 6. And then I'm going to simplify 8 times 9 is 72, x to the power of 6 times x squared. So now I'm doing what we were doing in the first examples, we were multiplying together. So anything that has the same base, I go in alphabetical order, x's together, I add the exponents. So 6 plus 2 is 8, so it's x to the power of 8. And then y cubed times y to the power of 6 is y to the power of 9. So that's what you should get for that example. So remember, you need to first raise the things inside the brackets to their exponents that are outside the brackets. Then we need to simplify those numerical factors, okay? Now you can go straight from there to there. You can skip out the step. So long as you remember that you're not multiplying 2 by 3, you are raising 2 to the power of 3. So you can work out 2 to the power of 3 is 8 straight away. 
and 3 to the power of 2 is 9 straight away. So you don't have to write the step in between and you can save time. But you have to make sure that you remember that you can't multiply. Okay, because these are not exponents, you can't multiply it. So if you're not sure yet, then rather do the step for now until you become more confident and then you can start leaving that step out and going straight to the step over here. So you can start um, just working out the power straight away. Okay, now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. Now these ones are a little bit more complicated because you have multiplication and raising powers to powers to do in these examples. So I'm going to give you three minutes to complete these questions. Okay, let's see how you did with each of these examples. So the first one we had was 2a to the power of 8b to the power of 7. And then in brackets, we had negative 7a cubed b to the power of 8. And that's all squared. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is sort out this square over here. So I'm not going to be doing anything with that for now. That's going to stay as it is. 2a to the power of 8b to the power of 7. Then over here... I need to determine, is this going to be positive or negative? Because I've got a minus inside here. That's an even exponent, which means that this is going to change to positive. And then that becomes 7 squared. a to the power of 3 times 2 is 6. b to the power of 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, so now I've done that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the 7 squared. So that's all. Everything else is going to stay as it is for now. Now, like I said, you can go straight from here to there if you are able to remember to raise it to the power of 2 and not multiply it by 2. Okay, so 7 squared is 49. a to the power of 6, b to the power of 16. Okay, now I'm going to multiply these together. So 2 times 49, that's going to give you 98. a to the power of 8, 
times a to the power of 6, I add the exponents, the base stays the same, 8 plus 6 is 14. And then b to the power of 7 times b to the power of 16 is b to the power of 23. So that's what you should have got for question A. You should have got 98, a to the power of 14, b to the power of 23. Question B. Now on this one again, this is going to stay as it is for now, so I'm just going to keep writing that as it is. But then this over here, I need to simplify. So I've got 5 squared, and then I've got x squared, then I've got y to the power of 6 times 2 is 12, and then z to the power of 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify by multiplying. First of all, I need to simplify that, actually. So, negative 5, x to the power of 9, z to the power of 4. And then in brackets, 5 squared is 25. And then x to the power of 2, y to the power of 12, z to the power of 14. Okay, so now I can simplify this. I've got a negative times a positive is negative. 5 times 25 is 125. And then my x's, I've got x to the power of 9 times x squared, that is x to the power of 11. Then my y's, I've got y to the power of 12, there's no y's here, so that's going to stay the same. And then my z's, I've got z to the power of 4 and z to the power of 14, so that's z to the power of 4 plus 14 is z to the power of 18. So that's what you should have got for question B. Question C, we've got negative 2 e to the power of 9 f squared g to the power of 5 cubed. And then that's multiplied by negative e x squared g cubed to the power of 4. So first, I'm going to simplify this set of brackets over here. I've got a negative, and the exponent is odd. That means that that's going to stay negative. I'm going to keep it in brackets because I'm still going to be multiplying it together. Okay, so it's negative. Then 2 cubed e to the power of 9 times 3 is 27. f to the power of 2 times 3 is 6 and g to the power of 5 times 3, which is 15. Then I've got in my other set of brackets, it's also negative, but this exponent over here is even, which means that that's going to change to positive. So it's going to be e to the power of 1 times 4 is 4, f to the power of 2 times 4 is 8, and g to the power of 3 times 4 is 12. So now I'm going to simplify this 2 cubed over here. That gives me 8. So it's going to be negative 8, e to the power of 27, f to the power of 6, g to the power of 15, and then e to the power of 4, f to the power of 8, g to the power of 12. And now I'm going to multiply those together. So a negative times a positive is negative. 8, there's no number there to multiply by, so it stays 8. Then I've got my e's. e to the power of 27 times e to the power of 4 is e to the power of 31. Then my f's. f to the power of 6 times f to the power of 8 is f to the power of 14. Then my g's g to the power of 15 times g to the power of 12 is g to the power of 27. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last one, question D, I've got over here, negative x squared z to the power of 9 in, in brackets to the power of 4, and then 6x to the power of 5, y to the power of 6, z in brackets to the power of 2. So first, I need to simplify this over here. A negative to the power of 4 is going to be positive because that's an even exponent. So it's going to be positive there are no numbers here, so I'm going to go straight into my variables. x squared to the power of 4 is x to the power of 8. And then z to the, po z to the power of 9 to the power of 4 is 9 times 4 is 36. That's z to the power of 36. Then over here, I've got 6 to the power of 1 times 2 is 6 to the power of 2. Then x to the power of 5 times 2 is x to the power of 10. And then y to the power of 6 times 2 is y to the power of 12. And then z to the power of 1 times 2 is z to the power of 2. Now I'm going to simplify the 6 squared over here. So that gives me x to the power of 8, z to the power of 36. That's not changing yet. This is going to be 36, x to the power of 10, y to the power of 12, z to the power of 2. And now I can simplify. The 36 is the only number, so it's going to stay 36. Then x to the power of 8 times x to the power of 10 is x to the power of 18. There's no y over here, so I'm going to just keep this y the same. So it's y to the power of 12. And then z to the power of 36 times z to the power of 2 is z to the power of 38. 
So as we should have got for the last question over there. And that is how we multiply algebraic expressions using the laws of exponents. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.